the scripture is found in Matthew chapter number seven, verses 24 through 29. Matthew chapter number seven, verses 24 through 29. And the scripture reads as follows. As Jesus speaks, everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished these sayings, the crowds were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. I'd like to use for a subject this morning the key that enables us to stand. The key that enables us to stand. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for the word. Lord God, we pray that you would just speak to me and speak through me. Save, heal, deliver, and move in a mighty way. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just touch everyone who hears my voice. Lord God, may you give us a word to encourage us, a, a word to instruct us, a word to help us to make it through life. Lord God, we thank you for your word. Help us, God, to stand in this season, in every season. We praise you and we glorify you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Have your way, God, and speak now to me and through me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and we receive it by faith. And the saints of God say, amen. The key that enables us to stand. A boxing coach was giving his students, amateur boxers, the foundation they would need in order to be successful in the sport and survive adverse situations. The coach told his students that in order to win any fight, they would have to ensure that during the fight and at the end of the fight, that they were able to stand. Furthermore, there was a key concept or a lesson they had to learn that would enable them to stand no matter what came their way. This concept was so vital, so essential to the student's success that the coach had to teach it in a way that the students would never forget. The coach set up a boxing match between two equally matched students in the class. He wanted the whole class to observe this fight. Then the coach sent both of the fighters through vigorous but different training routines. Both fighters would watch, film, and study different fighting techniques. Both fighters would lift weights, jump rope, and do extensive cardiovascular training. Both fighters would practice throwing punches, jabs, and combinations. Both fighters would learn defense and how to protect themselves at all times. Both fighters would, stir, would study and learn the footwork that goes with throwing punches and maneuvering around the boxing ring. But during the entire training pro process, only one fighter would spar daily and actually participate in boxing matches, putting the study skills to use. At the end of the eight week period, the two equally match boxers fought. And the one who had sparred daily destroyed the other fighter 
knocking him out quickly. The next day after the boxing match, the coach called all of the students together, including the two young men who fought. The coach said, gentlemen, it's two things that I want you to learn from yesterday's boxing match. Number one, everybody has a plan going into a boxing match until you get hit in the mouth. Number two, none of the skills or boxing techniques matter if you don't do them at all times, especially when adversity comes. One fighter was studying boxing technique while the other was ensuring daily that no matter what came his way, he was applying what he had learned so he would be able to stand. The application of my teaching is the key. Class dismiss. I have found that one of the keys to success in this Christian journey is actually doing what the word says at all times, especially during times of crisis and adversity. In this text, as Jesus concludes his sermon on the Mount, he gives one last teaching on the importance of application that will enable us to stand. First, hear me, wisdom and action go hand in hand. Wisdom and action go hand in hand. In the top drawer of my bedroom dresser is a healthy communication checklist slash advice sheet that was given to me by my marital counselor and personal therapist. Yep, I know some of you are stuck right there. My pastor has a therapist, but that's your issue, not mine. Anyway, the communication checklist has all of this great and essential advice for marital relationships. Seek to understand before being understood. Express all of your feelings without holding back, but in a non-threatening and peaceful manner. Don't holler, cuss, name call, put your partner down, withhold affection, get physical, use the silent treatment, etc., etc. Take a time out for 45 minutes or so if you feel yourself getting upset and then re-engage your partner in a healthy way. Don't dwell in the past, address one issue at a time. Don't throw in the kitchen sink or attack your partner with several issues at once. All great marital advice. But then at the end of the sheet, just when you are reading this and thinking, there's no way in the world I can do this all the time, is a statement that says, if you don't practice these healthy communication skills, you are responsible for creating the failure of your relationship. Healthy relationships are team oriented, driven by acceptance and mutual respect. Simply stated, this list doesn't matter and won't help you if you don't do it. In this text, Jesus is concluding his sermon on the Mount as he teaches his disciples. Jesus has taught them daily who really is blessed and who really is cursed. He's taught them that they are the salt of the earth as believers. He's taught them that he has come to uphold the law and not to abolish it. Jesus has taught them to reconcile with their brothers and sisters in Christ before approaching God's sacred altar. Jesus has taught them not to have lust in their hearts. He's taught them to honor their marital covenants and to stay away from divorce except for in cases of unchastity. He's taught them not to retaliate and to love everyone, including their enemies. Mm -hmm. Jesus has taught them to give and fast secretly, not for a reward or to be, or to be seen by others. Jesus has taught them to pray and how to pray. He's taught them to store up their treasures in the right place. Mm -hmm. He's taught them not to worry about anything. But before Jesus ends this series of teachings, 
and descends from the mountaintop. He tells them in verses 24 and 25, everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. In other words, Jesus is saying this whole mountaintop experience will be a waste of time if you don't do what I teach. Know the application of my teaching is the key that will enable you to stand. Marital counseling won't work if you don't do it. Weight loss plans won't work if you don't do it. Exercise plans won't work if you don't do it. Financial plans won't work if you don't do it. Spiritual growth plans won't work if you don't do it. No, nothing works in the body of Christ if we just come to church Sunday after Sunday. If we hear the words but never act on them, it won't work because the reality is wisdom and action go hand in hand. Second and final, and I'm done. Foolishness and disobedience are also linked. As Jesus gives the second half of the analogy in this text, to me, at first glimpse, it almost seems unnecessary. I mean, I got it. The key that enables us to stand is to hear the words of Jesus and act on them. We must do what Jesus teaches simple right but then the holy spirit instructed me to look deeper into the text through the eyes of god to look at the difference in the two men both men are builders just like both boxers in the beginning of the sermon were training and just like two people might be coming to church or even listening to my words right now they seem to be the same on the exterior. They seem to be doing the same work on the exterior. But at the foundation, they're fundamentally different. What these builders construct seems to be the same when looking at the outside in. But the houses or buildings are not the same at all because the foundation is totally different. One house is built on rock, or should I say the rock, the revelation of who Jesus is, while the other house is built on shaky, unstable sand. And even though these houses seem to be the same on the exterior, the interior foundation is really very different. In adverse situations, i.e., rain, winds, and floods will expose the difference. If your day is controlled by what people say, if your service is based on what people do, if your praise is affected by how people act, if your joy is rooted in your bank account or your job, if your happiness and Christian service is determined by how a man or a woman is acting at the moment, just maybe your house is built on shaky, unstable sand. And even though you seem to be the same on the exterior, when the storms come and the rains come and the floods come and the winds blow, the, the difference will be exposed which means that the rain falls and the floods and everything that comes in verse 27. It said, if your house is built on a shaky foundation, your house will not stand. Verse 27 clearly states, our house will fall and great will be the fall if our house is built on an unstable foundation like sand. And just like wisdom and obedient action go hand in hand, foolishness, and disobedience are also linked. Foolishness is not just saying foolish things. 
Sometimes foolishness is what we do. Let me help you here. No matter what comes our way, it's foolish not to praise God. No matter what comes our way, it's foolish not to give God the honor and the glory. No matter what comes our way, it's foolish not to serve God and do God's will and God's work. It's foolish to, to allow somebody to cause you to walk away from the church because of what they say or what they do. No, it's foolish not to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory at all times. You ain't serving her because you don't like somebody. You ain't serving her because somebody hurt your feelings. You ain't serving her because somebody scandalized your name. Just maybe your house is built on sand and not built on the rock because if your house was built on the rock, you still would be giving God the praise because the Lord is still good. No matter what comes our way, we have to learn to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory because if your house is built on the rock, lives will be changed. If your house is built on the rock, the day will be raised. If your house is built on the rock, the flood will be withstood. They hung Jesus Christ high and they stretched him wide. They put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and Jesus died. Yes, he died, but Jesus was faithful unto death. Jesus kept doing God's will and God's way. Jesus didn't just hear the word, but he did the word. And since Jesus had the key that enabled him to stand on the third day. He gets back up with all power in his hands. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that Jesus, if he's breathed on you, if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the key that enables us to stand. This is the point when the virtual organ starts playing. This is the point when you get your virtual praise on. This is the point when you let the world know this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world cannot take it away. You have the key that enables you to stand. If you hear the word, act on the word, and know that God is worthy at all times and in all seasons of all the praise, honor, and glory. You have the key that enables you to stand. God bless you. If you hear my words, don't harden your heart, but allow God to use you. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you can't work because of the crisis, the epidemic. Maybe your work has changed in such a way that it's creating all kinds of stress. Maybe your relationship is being tested now on a way that you had never been tested before. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that if the Holy Spirit is in you and you do what God says, you have the key that enables you to stand. So pray this prayer with me. Father God, Save me right now. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I pray right now, Lord, that you would come into my heart and change my life. I pray that I'm a doer of the word and not, a hear and not just a hero. Give me that key that enables me to stand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and the saints of God say, amen.